All right, for today's video, we have two guys, Talib and Marcus. Talib is a goat farmer. He has goat milk, goat meat, goat wool, goat cheese. He's got a lot of goat stuff. And this is Marcus. Marcus is a miner who mines for salt. Plenty of salt. Talib's got way more stuff. Marcus's stuff is way more valuable. Talib's food is pretty bland. Marcus doesn't have any food, just salt. So they trade. So now you've finished brainstorming and, come up, and coming up with your own list of what you think the benefits of trade might be, I'm going to go through my list. The first benefit of trade we're going to talk about is trade makes more products available to you. There's more of everything. There's more meat, there's more food, there's more clothing, because it, now you've kind of got all of the products from all of the people that you come into contact with. So there's way more products available to you. Um, you also discover through trade that someone else may have stuff that's better than yours. Um, all his life, Talib's been eating goat meat. He might find somebody who has chickens and find out that chicken tastes way better than goat. I don't know, I've never had goat. Uh, but chicken may taste way better because... He's been able to trade for it. Another thing that Talib's going to find out through trade, and I bring up Talib specifically, because Talib had a lot of extra stuff. Talib had a lot of goats, so Talib had a lot of wool, Talib had a lot of meat, Talib had a lot of cheese, more than he can possibly eat or do anything with. So Talib can trade and get rid of some of the extra stuff that he has, and get some other stuff that he doesn't have enough of, that he might not have any of. So trade allows him to get rid of some of the extra. The last thing that I want to make sure you understand about trade is trade sometimes reveals to you stuff you never even dreamed of. Through trade, you might find new stuff that you've never seen before. So trade is great, but what happens if Talib and Marcus aren't neighbors? They're actually separated by this large, impossible sea. What happens then? to all this beautiful trade. What do you think? What's gonna happen is a new guy is gonna enter the scene. The guy's name is gonna be Jamal. Jamal knows how to connect our two characters. Let's say for an example that Jamal's dad was a fisherman. Jamal grew up traveling this impossible sea from the time he was old enough to hold a fishing net and help his dad on the boat. So Jamal has a boat. Jamal has these skills. He knows how to get across this ocean. Jamal is going to be the guy who connects Talib with Marcus and Marcus with the leap. Jamal is going to be what we call a merchant. And what this list is basically is this is a list of what it means to be a merchant. First, Jamal is going to connect people to the goods they want or need. He is going to make a profit by asking to leave and Marcus to give a little extra of their products. He's going to spend money on tools and equipment needed for trade and He's going to take a risk in order to make a profit. Connecting people. So what he does is connect the people, makes a profit, spends money, and takes a risk. So what does this mean? He connects people. 
That means Jamal, the merchant, is a middleman. Jamal is the middleman. He's the man between Talib and Marcus putting them together. Jamal is also making a profit and taking a risk. Do you remember what that makes him? He takes a risk. He makes a profit. What word do we use to describe people who take a risk in order to make a profit? You guessed it. Jamal is an entrepreneur. And there's one more thing that he is. Jamal spent money on tools and equipment needed for trade. This is a new type of person. This is a person who is what we call an investor. When you spend money on tools and equipment, you become an investor. He's put a lot of money into this. He may lose it, but he also can make some serious, serious money. 